CERN Basher says that because it's a short stock week and it's thrown him completely off, that he is, um, you know, going to throw us a completely different kind of show today. So if you like all those charts and graphs, I don't know if we're going to get one or none or, but, you know, something. CERN, I'm just going to, you know, you're going to have to surprise me, tickle me, whatever, you know. This is going to be a different show, but it may be the most important one that we've done. Wow. Okay. Yeah. For your viewers. All right. All right. So before we get there, though, let's, I mean, I can't completely, you know, not show any charts. Okay. Pictures. Um, let's talk about this one for a second. Yeah. It was pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, sorry, I'm just going to put it in read mode. Here we go. All right. So, you know, this came out, was it the day before Thanksgiving? Yeah, a couple maybe, days ago? You know, somewhere like that. Yeah. 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 And so it's a nice, you know, image of the Tesla fleet, I suppose. Yeah. Um, it's conspicuous in what it's missing. Right. Right. Like, where's the Roadster? Where's right. the Megapack? Where's Powerwall? Solar, you know, solar roof, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Could have easily put some of those things in there. That kind of, that would have been kind of cool. Does it have a Juniper? Does it have the new, whatever it's going to be, Model 2.5 or whatever? Yeah, no, and they and that's, that's fine because they haven't announced that yet. Yeah, yeah. Right? But there's something about this image that, that struck me. Something that they, they, they could have taken this opportunity to make a major statement. Any ideas on what that was, was Randy? <laughs> well, I know that I had to go back because somebody pointed out, because I had noticed that I looked at the picture way too fast. So somebody pointed it out. I went back and saw that Robot that uh, Optimus, you know, was standing in the back row, just kind of unobtrusively. And so that was interesting. Well, so my observation is regarding Optimus as well. And I think Tesla lost an opportunity here. They should have put 50 Optimus in this image. 50, okay. Or at least 30, because for every vehicle, I think they can make 20 to 30 Optimus. Oh, there you go. Yes, we've done that. So to me, that would have been incredible if they'd done that <laughs> it also would have got people thinking about wondering how many Optimus they produced right right um to me that was a missed opportunity well and then you know two days later or the next day or whatever they had uh, the boys in the lab decided to show us uh, Optimus catching a ball which was well yeah so you saw that but did did you see this this is Optimus oh. in the factory building cyber trucks this no I didn't see this See this? They've got Optimus clearly testing oh, things, testing I, the wind, windshield. <laughs> you know, um, so Optimus is clearly doing some pretty serious work, loading the cyber truck with more cyber trucks. Um, so clearly, you know, if all those people that say Optimus isn't doing anything useful, here's Exhibit A right yeah, here. <laughs> I did miss this series, or is this your series? No, it is not. And no, I'm sorry, I don't know actually who posted uh, this on X, and I apologize. Oh. Um, normally, I try to capture who did that, but I grabbed these images and failed to remember who who posted them. This person deserves a prize. They did an outstanding and fun job. <laughs> they did. Yeah, it was very well done. Yes. Yep. So here's here's what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, this is kind of a neat neat video. Uh, the hand is kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, and of course, catching the ball. I didn't do a great job of screenshotting the exact moment of the catch, but I see. No, uh, <laughs> okay. Optimus did catch the ball a couple of times. Right, right. Uh, with the left hand, nonetheless, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, it must be you know a baseball player. Could be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we believe that because it's red, that it's being teleoperated. Oh, it was, and we were told they, they confirmed that. They confirmed, they confirmed that. Yes. Yeah, but I think maybe the red light also indicates that. Okay. Instead of blue. Right. Um, so, yeah, what, what were your thoughts about this, Randy? You know, um, I thought it was uh, really amazing. First of all, I thought it was amazing when I didn't know it was teleoperated. And I almost thought it was more amazing that they were able to do it teleoperated because that means the teleoperator has to be clever enough <laughs> to no. negotiate that R to get over there in time. Twice, a, twice in a row, maybe. Now, maybe they did it 100 times before they got it right. But uh, no, I thought it was absolutely uh, in, it, it, on the level of impossible for 
a person to teleoperate that thing and get it to catch that ball. <laughs> and to do it twice in a row. To do it twice in a row. Yeah. Right. You could imagine the floor being littered with, you know, 200 tennis balls. That's right. <laughs> so somebody did a good job cleaning them all up if that was the case. Yeah. No, but it is it is impressive. It shows an improved capability, in my opinion. Right. And the hand, is obviously, is very interesting, very different, very human-like in many ways. They talked about it being very sensitive to touch, yep. um, which would help it with the baseball catch because the... I, I don't know how much of it was teleoperated. So it may be that the teleoperator was only in charge of positioning and the robot was closing its grip or closing its mm -hmm. hand, you know, once it felt the tension. I don't know. But the, but whatever's going on, it is, uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh, we can see clear new steps. This is also the 22 uh, degrees of freedom hand. Uh, and uh, they told us that probably by the end of December, this will be production ready. And the humanoid humanoid hub reminded us that it was about a year ago that Elon said that Optimus would be able to thread a needle. Oh. And so that would be interesting to see if we get a video on that at some point. That would be. Um, so that's something to watch out for. Um so we'll see. I would like I would like to see it uh become a champion at Diablo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Entirely possible, although Elon may not want that. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So, yeah, so that was great. And then uh, in keeping with the season, I thought this was a cute cartoon. What do you mean? We're a short? Says one turkey to the other. We're a short. Um, well, okay. It I, means their life isn't, uh, expectancy isn't so long. I see. That's the short he's talking about. Because I can think of mm. all kinds of ways to take This that. is a f financial markets uh, viewpoint here. Yes. I was thinking it was maybe that the shorts are turkeys. No, well, yeah, sure. No, that that would be a great interpretation. I, that's yeah. what, that was my first impression. So this well, is a Rorsch, this is a Rorschach cartoon. I think so. <laughs> Rorschach turkey cartoon. What a great combination! That's those words have never been said together before. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. So we're going to make a clear delineation here between turkeys. Okay. And somebody on X that is asking some profound questions. So we don't want to blur the lines here. Okay, all right. Okay, this this next X poster is not a turkey. Yeah, okay. <laughs> be clear. Okay? There's this guy named Randy Kirk on X that asked this important question. And now we're transitioning to the to the really the serious important part of the show. Yeah, we got we we're getting in, into the red meat as opposed to the white and dark meat. That's right. Okay. That's right. So, this Randy Kirk fellow asked, I have some young grandchildren. And there might even be more on the way. That's exciting. <laughs> I've been thinking about opening up trust accounts with a few thousand dollars worth of Tesla stock. What do you think of that idea? Um, and Randy, I, I think you might know this gentleman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've, I've run into him from time to time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what kinds of responses do you think he got on this uh, on this question? It was actually one of the more, uh, what do you want to call it? Uh, there was more uh, back and forth. There was more more engagement on this question than probably anything I've done up till now. Yeah, uh, because people, I think, are very, you know, uh, 20, 30, maybe over 30 years ago, I went to a wills conference or a wills and and trusts. Um, what do you want to call it? A little a meeting, you know, one of these things put on by somebody who's in the business. Um, you know, uh, even then I was thinking, OK, how does this how does this play out? You know, what 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 is the best way to do your will? And uh, the one the one takeaway I got, I only remember one thing from that meeting. He says, "Divide it evenly." Mm. Uh, you're, you know, you you can't go wrong dividing it evenly. <laughs> if you, you can go very wrong if you don't. So I thought that was good advice. But other than that, uh, it was just the beginning. At that time, you basically had wills and living trusts. That was that was pretty much what people did, one or the other. Now there's a lot more, um, you know, things out there that you can do. Uh, the, even to the point of um, how you how you um, negotiate your pension, you can actually give your pension away in pieces, uh, mm -hmm. which doesn't go through probate. So there's there's a life insurance policy. So there's so many so many things you can do. So anyway, I uh, thought I would just ask specifically. I think a lot of people in on X that follow you and me 
uh, you know, they've made a fair piece of money in this last five, six, seven, eight years, maybe on Tesla, maybe on Tesla Plus, maybe on their house, their home, and maybe one or two more homes um, that they might own and rent out. So uh, it's kind of a situation where it's all of a sudden becoming a significant amount of money that might be given away. Um, and do you want to give it with a cold hand or a warm hand? Right. Uh, what time do you want to give it? And how do you want to do it in a way that doesn't mess them up even more than they're already messed up by their parents? Yes, pretty yeah. major questions. And those parents who are your kids. So, right. so <laughs> you might have had a hand in messing your kids up. Yeah. Um, yeah, right. And very important questions. And maybe the the importance of it is compounded by an investment that does extremely well. Yeah, exactly. So, so for your viewers, think about how many shares of Tesla you own right now. Okay. And you know what those are worth. Multiply that by 10. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And your mind have that number. Now multiply it by 50. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. And multiply it by 100. I'm not suggesting that Tesla is going to 10, 50, or 100x. Oh, it's probably... possible. Yes. It's possible. Right. And it has been done before by, by many companies. Right. Right. And so, Part of this, I think, is to think about, you know, how you're positioned if that happens. Mm -hmm. To think ahead a little bit, and we'll get we'll dive into that a little bit. But also, then, what happens at that point when you have that much money, whatever that number was for you? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do then? The first question that comes to mind is: Is it enough for you and your and your significant other, your spouse? Right. Okay, great. If it is, awesome. Is it enough for your family? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Now we, now we start thinking about some of the questions that we, we just talked about a second ago in terms of distributing it to your kids, your grandkids. How do you do that? And then the third thing, Randy, is, is it even more than enough for your family where if you gave them that much money, mm -hmm. that would be a problem. So you need to think maybe a little bit more broadly, more globally and say, okay, what can I do with this money? Right. Right. You know, family foundation or charitable foundation, something like that, that, that may make sense. And there's and there's two other questions, sir, which I asked uh, over the previous two weeks uh, as part of the series. One of those is years and years ago, I realized that you cannot spend over a certain amount of money on stuff and experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can, but the experience you're talking about is stupid stuff like buying hundred dollar hamburgers or something. So, uh, but a normal person today would really find it hard uh, for a family of two, you know, a retired couple, they would find it hard to spend more than, you know, like twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars a month. I mean, it, you you really have to start buying jewelry or more property or some some other asset that's just going to add to the amount that you're going to be giving away. So, so there's a number. What that number could be different for different people, but my guess is people that spend people that are worth twenty-five million or a hundred million their budget isn't that different than your budget or my budget, <laughs> their monthly budget. Um, so that's one thing. It's like, okay, what can I really spend in my lifetime if I'm 55, 65, 75, starting to think about these things? Yep. Uh, you can't spend it all if you've got a if you've amassed a fair amount of money. If you're worth 500000 or more, let's say, especially if you're worth a couple of million, it's you're not going to spend it. So then all of a sudden, this becomes the next question. What is the wise way? Uh, to move uh, beyond that. Yeah. So let's talk about a few of these things. Um, the first thing, though, I want to talk about is kind of planning ahead, right? So as we sit here, sit here today, Tesla is at 340, 350, whatever the number is. You know, let's think ahead to that scenario where it does fantastically well. Right. Most people, when they save money, we've been told to save as much as you can to a retirement account. Mm-hmm. You get a tax deduction when you put the money in. Right. The money grows tax tax deferred. Right. And a lot of people just save to retirement accounts. Mm -hmm. But think about this scenario for a second. You save a bunch of money to retirement account. And this this if you buy Tesla in your IRA, your 401k, SEP IRA, et cetera, all those different retirement accounts, what happens if you get such a massive balance in that account? What have you really done for yourself? you've ensured that you're going to be in the highest tax bracket for the rest of your life. <laughs> it's true. Right? Now, 
if you would have known that you would have hit a home run in an investment like that, 50, 100 X, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you actually probably wouldn't have put it in your retirement account. Now you might've put it in your Roth IRA, which mm -hmm. is great. Assuming the tax laws don't change. Right, right. But what happens if you want to retire before 59 and a half? Then that money in the Roth, to get it out, you might face penalties. There's some exceptions to this, but right. you might have just said, you know, forget retirement accounts. I'm just going to buy the stock and hold it. Yeah. And by doing that, you're in total control about when you sell it. Whereas in a retirement account, you're going to be forced to take the money out at some point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And also you'd be subject to capital gains tax versus that maximum income tax rate, which is going to be a lot higher. Right. So it kind of turns traditional advice on its head in some way. If you think you're going to own something that's going to do fantastically well. Right. 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 Keep it out of your retirement account. Put, mm -hmm. put other stuff in there. Mm -hmm. Right. That's not going to do as well. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. right. When you think about buying investments, you know, on behalf of your kids, a lot of people say, okay, use a custodial account. Mm -hmm. Again, think of the scenario where the investment does fantastically well. You take $10,000 and you turn it into, you name it. Well, upon a certain age, that child or grandchild is going to get access to that money and there's nothing you can do to stop them. Right. Right. Unless you don't tell them the account, account exists. <laughs> But the account custodian should be reaching out to right, the child right. to tell them it exists. Um, so, you know, you, you've got to think that through. You say, okay, yes, great. You, you did a great thing by putting money aside for that child, the grandchild. But now they might have too much money at a young age. When they turn, you know, 19 or 21 or 25 in some states, depending on what kind of account you use. So you have to think this through very carefully. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, and I would say too, it's very important not to just give children, grandchildren money, but you really, what you really want to do is pass on your values. Yes, of course. Right. You want to understand what this money means, what it's to be used for, or under what circumstances they get it or what, how they should think of using it or investing it. It, it opens the door to a, a bigger discussion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I've observed that most families actually don't have that discussion. We ask a lot of our clients, you know, what are your, what's your parents' financial situation like? And the answer is no idea. Yeah. We don't talk about it. Yeah. Right. Or vice versa. We ask the older generation, what, what, you know, what, what do you want your kids to do with this money? And they're like, don't know. We don't talk about it. So my first, my second key point, in addition to thinking about where you actually make the investment is really try to have a conversation with your family over time about all this stuff. Yeah. And you there's a, there's another wait. side there's another side to that. So I've I've thought really really a lot about this because my kids in terms of dividing things equally I made a deal with my kids that I would pay for half of their college. Mm -hmm. Um as they and but not uh, but not grad school. Two of my kids went to college and two didn't. So two of the kids got a large amount of money for college and two of kids who might have wanted to start a business with that same amount of money or might have wanted to, um, you know, spend it traveling around the world, getting an education in a non-traditional way. Um, they got nothing. Uh, and one of them has mentioned that from time to time. <laughs> and so then as I got started to think about the grandkids, my first inclination was to say, you only get the money if, and quite frankly, I made the, I, I've made the decision at, at, that you'll get the money irregardless. You'll get it, period. But then all of a sudden I have one that's uh, a little troubled, <laughs> yeah. not making wise decisions right now. Right. So it's like, oh my gosh, you go back and forth with regard to what, what's really the right thing. What's really the right way Yes, giving them good values, you know, hopefully in terms of what do you want to call it? maybe foundational kinds of values, you know, financial values be great, although kids are not really very interested usually in anything very deep on finance when they're in their teens. Mm -hmm. uh, but their foundational values, their 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 character, 
uh, if you if the character has been molded in the right way, that would be that would go a long way, I think, towards them spending whatever that you manage. It'll, it'll go a long way. I don't think that it necessarily solves the problem because we've seen it. We've seen kids, you know, get a decent pop when they're in their 20s or 30s and they're waiting for it. And they're, you know, maybe not uh, uh, progressing as well as they might in terms of their own uh, their own future because they're like, well, I'm going to get this money anyway. Yeah, right. And so your example is a really good one because there's going to be lots of individual differences and in how kids and grandkids turn out and what they do and how they view the world. Mm -hmm. And some of that might not align with the way you view things. Right. Right. And you sort of want to try to guide them, but at the same time, you don't want resentment and all that stuff. Um, one of the interesting strategies that I really love for folks, particularly uh, with younger kids or even grandkids, is to say to them, when they're of a certain age and able to work, mm -hmm. Um, let's say they might make a little bit of money. Um, you match mm. or put money into like a Roth IRA for them. Right. So let's say they make, you know, a few thousand dollars. You say, well, you, you can make that money and you can spend it. But you know what? As a reward, I'm going to put the same amount of money into a Roth IRA uh, up to the up to the cap. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, or whatever. if they make 2,000, you put 2,000. If they make 3,000, you put 3,000 in, right? Mm -hmm. Um that that can kind of be an interesting strategy because you are rewarding them for work much in the same way that if had they worked for an employer or offered a 401k and as a company match, um, in that case, the company rewards you for saving, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you're rewarding them for working. Right. Right. Which, which is an, an interesting idea. Um, they have to work hard in order to get that extra money that that's going to be put aside for their longer term future. Right, right, right. Right now, there's no guarantee that they won't access that at some point in time. But I, I like that approach uh, instead of just giving kids or grandkids money. Yeah, is tie it to something, something right. that's in their control. Right. So the, my whole my whole trip down this particular road in the last few weeks really started with the idea that I think I think my friends I know for me and many of my friends any decision to give their grandkids money for college came um, in the time when they're in college. So in other words, they're taking current earnings and spending it now for current value. Yep. And so that's where I started looking at the potential for Tesla and saying, okay, I have a high degree of expectation that Tesla is gonna 10 time or 20 time, you know, over these next six, seven, eight, 10 years, so why wouldn't it be smarter for me to put some money into Tesla and put that into the savings account and let the money build so that and and then if I want to do it when they're 18 years old so they can use it to pay for college or to start a business or to travel around the world or whatever it is that they decide to do or however I want to characterize that that uh, that that how they spend it um you know that would be maybe a smarter way and then if I happen to fork off in the meantime, it's still going to happen. <laughs> yeah. And trusts are useful for that type of thing. You can be very specific, right? right. The challenge with the trust is the cost. Right. And so unless it's a large enough amount, then it may not really be worth it. That That's for you to evaluate. Right. Um, and you should work with a, a trusted state attorney in your state who's familiar with your state's laws. <laughs> um. It, but yeah, you, you can structure that any way you want. And that's the beautiful thing about trusts. Right. And it's so flexible. It's it's kind of crazy, actually. Um, and the greater the wealth you have and, and the more sort of ideas that you have, the, the trust is perfect for that kind of thing. Um, and you really have to think ahead. Like a lot of people have put money in, in for college savings and five to nine plants. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. And they they get concerned about the cost of college um, and they put a lot of money in and the five to nine plan does well over time. And so now you've got all this money in a college savings account mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that is either not used because the kid doesn't go to college. Right. <laughs> or not fully used because they went to college and maybe they got some scholarship or something. And so it's not <laughs> fully used. And so now you've got this balance in this five to nine account that you've got to figure out what to do with.
Now, yeah, you can take it out. You you can change the beneficiary. There's all kinds of different things you can do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but sometimes you end up creating a, a problem for yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying is with a company like Tesla, which actually you cannot put in a 5 to 9 plan. I'm not aware of any 5 to 9 plans that will allow you to buy individual stocks. Okay. So that's not really an issue here. But one of my messages is if, if you think you own a company that's going to do fantastically well or could do fantastically well, you need to be very intentional about where you place that investment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. A Roth IRA should be good if, mm -hmm. if they don't change the rules. Mm -hmm. And you know politicians, they like to change the rules all the time. Nothing is permanent when it comes to this stuff. Right. <laughs> a retirement account may not be the best place to put it because of the tax implications. If it's a massive amount of money, you might just be better off saving that in a regular brokerage account. Yeah. And then you have complete control over it. Yeah. And then, of course, there's the other side of it, uh, which is, okay, um, I'll let the kids figure it out for themselves. You know, uh, that'll be better for them. Uh, maybe I'll give them small amounts. When I say kids, grandkids, either one, quite frankly. Some people choose not to enrich their children uh, mm -hmm. generationally uh, because they figure it will spoil them in some way. And I think there's a lot to be, I think there's a lot of truth to that, even though yeah. my current plan is to is to divide it evenly among the four kids and, and to provide for the grandkids. Um, but uh, there's the alternatives, you know, uh, which would be, for instance, charities. So people have ch churches, synagogues, etc. Uh, they might have, uh, um, you know, specific charity that they've been very, very active or interested in, or maybe they just decide, okay, I want to sit down today and figure out which charities I do want to send it off to. They could, one of the biggest charities that people give to is the U.S. government. You can literally write a check uh, or, or put in your will that you want the U.S. government to get X amount of dollars, uh, uh, because, you know, because I don't they know. Need, they need the money because they're responsibly spending it now. Yes. <laughs> I don't know why anybody would do that. But anyway, so, uh, yeah, so, uh, but I have no, um, I don't have any thoughts or, or uh, uh, in terms of of uh, how people might do that. I know there's, you know, plenty of folks in the multi-billion dollar category that are, they're spending a massive amount of time and energy trying to make those decisions. Yeah, a lot of it is around tax avoidance, right? All the legal ways that you can try to avoid or minimize tax. Right. Um, and again, I'm not uh, here to give any legal or, or tax advice. Um, and there's all kinds of different ways of doing it. And for people that have created a fantastic amount of, of wealth, there's so many different tools. Mm hmm um, and, and a crazy, actually, variety of tools. Basically, you just sort of need to think about what you want your legacy to be and then kind of back into the best way of achieving that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you're somebody that has, you know, $100 million in Tesla stock, then chances are you've got way more than your family would need or you'd really want to give your family right. Right. for most people. Not everybody, even, but most even people. Even $10 million might be too much. Right? Even $10 million. <laughs> right, again, you need to think very carefully about this. Um, Warren Buffett actually wrote uh, a letter uh, a few days ago. Yeah. Dated November 25th. And he says um, he, th he believes that our belief is that hugely wealthy parents should leave their children enough so they can do anything. Hmm. Not enough that they can do nothing. <laughs> right. And the question is, what's what's that number? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, in Warren Buffett's case, his, his kids are now uh, 71, 69, and 66. Right. <laughs> so I think, you know, they, they've been through life and they've they've done pretty well for themselves and don't need dad's money. Right. Uh, his $150 billion. <laughs> yeah. Right. So in his case, upon his death, the money is going to go into some, um, some foundations, uh, right. four family foundations. Yeah. And from there, the money will be distributed out per Actually, the, those same kids are supposed to uh, now figure out how to spend it, I guess. Yeah. And he's saying that that that, that money may not be distributed over their lifetimes. It may go right. beyond their lifetimes. Right. right. Yeah. Right. right. So you've got in this case, you know, 150 billion. He's got to be very intentional about what he wants. Right. Yeah. And one um, and one person who answered me on X said that he worried about giving his money to some uh, organizations, whether it's his college or Yep. Or a foundation, or uh, you know, some other uh, other group, because sometimes over a period of years or decades, 
they changed their mission or they changed their political stripes. And, and uh, you know, I've never given a dollar to my university. I went to UCLA undergrad and grad. And, uh, you know, the, the kinds of things that they do now at UCLA, I don't want to support. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And also many of those colleges are pretty well funded, so they're yeah, not yeah. wanting for money. Right. Um, the other consideration, too, is let's say you you do all this work up front you think about where you what you want to do with your money what your legacy is you you create some trusts right you pass away the trusts are funded and then the person in charge of investing the trust takes your tesla stock and divests it all oh uh, yeah right so you got to make sure everything's in alignment you got to right. make sure that whoever you've got executing your plan gets it and understands what yes. you wanted to have done Right. In that case, you know, maybe the best laid plans go awry because, you, you know, one one person had a different view. Yeah, there's a that, that becomes particularly complicated when it comes to uh, giving a, a house or a business. Um, and so when I was doing my trust, it was like that was the most complicated part was, mm -hmm. OK, do the kids get to decide what to do with the house so that, you know, for for argue about whether to rent it out or sell it or live in it or whatever? Uh, do you give a specific direction in, in terms of what they do with the house? Um, and and if it's going to be, if if the direction is, no, you should sell it, well, do you sell it the day after daddy dies uh, when it may be a, a slumping market? Or does the trustee get some say in making a decision right. with regard to that? So it just gets really... <laughs> but if you sell the darn house before you die, then you pay massive stupid taxes. Um, yeah, so, or even the trustee maybe even putting some money into the house to, to bring it back up to today's up. Right. standards or something, right? Yeah. If it's been neglected for a while. Yeah. Yeah, it gets complicated. It gets complicated. It does get very complicated. Um, and in Warren Buffett's letter too, um, he's talking about the idea that when you uh, create a will, that you should share it with the parties involved in the will before you sign it. Right. And get their feedback. Right. And he says, actually, that's not a bad idea, that you should uncover any problems before you pass right. rather than have the problems after. Right. Uh, and he said his father did the same with him. Mm -hmm. And he said, there's nothing wrong with having to defend my thoughts. That's right. Yes. Right. So, uh, so that would probably depend on how you're going to divide it. So if you're, yeah. giving, if you're giving it all to your oldest son and nothing to your younger daughter, um, I, I'm not sure I'd have that conversation. <laughs> well, that's probably true. And and he says, you need to be careful because he says, I'll just read this to you. I change my will every couple of years, often in only minor ways and keep things simple. Over the years, Charlie, who uh, right. Warren Buffett's former business partner, Charlie Munger, Charlie and I saw many families driven apart after the posthumous dictates of the will left beneficiaries confused and sometimes angry. Yes. Yes. Jealousies, along with actual or imagined slights during childhood, became yes. magnified, particularly when sons were favored over daughters. Right. Right. Either in monetary ways or by positions of importance. Absolutely. Right? The son. The son becomes the CEO of a company or something, and I've I've seen the movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, now he did say Charlie and I also witnessed a few cases where a wealthy parent's will was fully discussed before death help the family become closer. Mm -hmm. And he says, what could, what could be more satisfying? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, I mean, you know, you have to be very intentional about this and with, with great wealth comes great responsibility. Absolutely. Right. And it's possible that many Tesla shareholders may find themselves wealthy beyond their wildest imaginations um, over time. If Tesla can execute on the things that we think they're, they're capable of. From your lips. Yeah. You know, <laughs> And uh, of course, I'd love to have lots of comments on this particular episode. Love to have your questions or comments and possibly some of those questions we would answer, you know, at a later time in another in another uh, uh, episode, because uh, I'm sure we're probably creating every there's so many, you know, blended families and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, people that are out of sorts with their children. That's I can't believe the, the number of, of, of stories out there of, of parents and, and, and their children that are not speaking to one another. They haven't seen their grandchildren or whatever. So there's a, there's a, there's a, so many stories out there in the, in the big city. So love to have your comments, your questions, 
and then maybe later on we'll we'll take we'll deal with some of those. Yeah, and I think it's important to say that there's no right way to do this. Um, you know, we've discussed some different ideas and so on. There's no right way to do this. You can do this any way you want. You can leave all your money to one favorite child if you want to, right? Or none to any of your children if you want to. Um, it's whatever you want to do. But I think my main message is be very intentional about it and think it through very carefully. And, you know, from Warren Buffett and other people have said, the more that you can discuss this with your family, the better, ideally. Mm -hmm. Although, again, you may have a family situation where that may not work. Right, right. And we understand that, too. Sure, sure. Yep. All right, CERN. Well, you're right. This was a very different uh, episode and uh, one that obviously you knew was on my heart anyway. And, and uh uh, because it, it has created a tremendous amount of discussion on X. And again, if you folks are following CERN and I on X, you sh or if you're not, you should be. But if, you're, if you are following us uh, and you want to continue the conversation there, you can do that as well, because those conversations have already been started there and, and we, can, uh, we can get maybe more immediate responses to you. Again, I don't have any kind of a degree or any kind of a license or any kind of a certificate that makes me any better at this than anybody else. And I'm not going to give you advice that I think that you should go out and, and make decisions on what I've said. CERN, I think, feels the same way. At least CERN has, he can help you on the fin finance part if you're a client, because you know he actually has schooling and experience and certificates and all kinds of stuff. I do have that, Randy, and that's and that's good. And what I would just add to what you just said, um, questions are great in the comments. Absolutely ask your questions. But what I would love to see is people sharing their ideas for mm -hmm. how they're thinking about handling it or how, how they have handled it. Right. Um, that, I think, would be very valuable for us to see, but also other people in the comments to read. Right. right. Um, share those ideas and let's let's see what's out there in terms of ideas. Yeah. Cool. Absolutely cool. All right, sir. Uh, as always, great to have you on board on this, uh, you know, uh, uh, a day where you said that we were going to be going cold turkey. Cold, today is cold turkey day. That's is, right. Is it okay that I stole your joke? No, it's a good joke. It's, it's a good uh, joke. A uh, few charts. We went cold turkey on the charts today. <laughs> All right. So for those of you who are still a little bit hungover from that cold turkey yesterday, um, you know, maybe this will, you'll have to watch this again later to fully grasp what it is that we talked about. But they're still sleeping on the couch from they're yesterday, Randy. They can't even get up, can't even get up for football. Uh, right. so football later today. Remember, there's, yeah, it's Black Friday football. How about that? Football every day these days, it seems. It's great. <laughs> all right, CERN, thanks so much. And to all of you out there, it's been great talking to you. Thanks, Randy.